Well, welcome to Cole Crawford, the founding executive director of Open Computes and the CEO of Vapor.io. Good to see you, Cole. Good to see you too. Now, what I'd like to find out a little bit more about is how the Open Computes project is doing at the moment. It looks as though some of the big guys who came in uh, into the project recently are beginning to get cold feet or realizing that they might be marginalized in the long term. Is that is that true or what do you think is actually happening? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that uh, with any disruptive technology, you have a, uh, a process of acceptance um, and anybody that's taken a psychology class kind of knows that um, part of that process is, uh, you know, doubt and uncertainty and fear. And uh, I think that there's a lot of companies on the planet right now that are fearful of what Open Compute is doing to this industry. Um, but I don't see it slowing down at all. Uh, you know, as you know, I have, uh, I have left my role as the executive director of the foundation uh, earlier this year. Corey Bell, who's taken, taken up the, the charge as the, as the leader, has done an amazing job in terms of bringing on even additional support for it. Um, I'm sure that the foundation will be announcing news um, you know, around uh, big and exciting companies joining, um, like we have year over year for the past four years. So um, if there's a slowdown, or if there's any perceived slowdown, it's created in microcosms by companies that have their head in the sand. And well, the fact is that many of the big companies are saying they openly support you, but there is a dichotomy between that massive mega data centers that are being built with open, where open computers an absolute mm -hmm. godsend, and those smaller uh, markets that the bigger guys are being squeezed into. Is that too simplistic or is that what they're worried no, about? No, it's completely fair. And in fact, you know, you look at, again, any, any sort of transitional period in technology transformation, you go from a market which focuses on services to a market which focuses on products. Um, no different than OpenStack right now, right? OpenStack has uh, a very healthy ecosystem of both product versions of OpenStack and service-based companies that are focused on making OpenStack work. Um, both of those approaches um, run in parallel in terms of market adoption, but at some point, the margins associated with services has to move more towards product. It needs to be much simpler and easier to consume. You've seen this in open source time and time again. Look at Red Hat. Right? Red Hat took the kernel, they took Linux, they productized it, and they made distributions, they made it very easy to use. Canonical does the same thing, SUSE does the same thing. Um, I think that, that Open Compute is very much in that uh, realm today. The, the guys that can hire you know, our version, the hardware version of kernel engineers, which are you know, your electrical engineers, your mechanical engineers, et cetera, um, these companies know how to build data centers, they know how to run the workloads that are important to them, uh, where your your average um, enterprise company, you know, at scale, maybe not hyperscale, but at scale company, is still dealing with the uh, the proposition of a distributed um, bus bar, right? DC bus bar. Um, so, actually, uh, this wasn't a guided question from you, I know, but it's it's exactly why vapor exists. Vapor exists to make open compute very easy to consume, um, and. As we move into a more cloud-enabled world, the economics of building data centers are going to have to compete um, with public cloud. And, so, yeah. If you could say in a in a if there's one is a one sentence description of, of why vapor is different, and why the vapor chamber is is different to that extent. Because we worked from the uh, top down, not the bottom up. Most brick and mortar data centers were built by real estate guys and we were software guys. Um, and we took the workload and said, what would be the most efficient hardware to run a workload on? Not the reverse. What can we do with this software to make it work well on this hardware? Which is actually um, in complete agreement with why open compute exists in the first place. But is not also in agreement with what's happening uh, in the telco world uh, and on the Facebook and the Google world where they have to push out to the edge nearer the consumer. And isn't that going to mean smaller data centers nearer the edge, nearer the consumer, and lots more of them? Absolutely. I, I, you know, and I, in fact, I've, I've written a blog uh, recently called The Tale of Two Clouds, which has uh, a lot to say in terms of 
the infrastructure clouds that we've been building for decades and the IoT clouds that we're going to have to build. And infrastructure clouds, we see the successful hyperscale infrastructure clouds being built today in remote areas where there's cheap power and there's cheap land. Um, and IoT, when it's all about connected devices and delivering um, content and experiences at the edge and analyzing that data at the edge, that's an urban data center. We're going to have to build our data centers into the urban fabric that makes up you know, the cities that we live in. The world is moving more towards urban than it is remote. And bandwidth is very expensive. Even today, it's very expensive. So when you watch your Netflix movie, you are watching at the edge. You're not going back to Amazon to stream that movie, or at least 99 point something percent of the time, you're not going back to Amazon to stream that movie. You're watching it at the edge. And I think as this uh, IoT cloud world develops, more and more companies are going to be figuring out how they have an edge story to tell. And this is a confusing world. Uh, it's confusing for us who write about it. <laughs> How, what's, you know, if I was somebody attempting to get into this world, what, how do I find out more about it? Yeah, so, um, you know, it's funny. You can claim to know a ton about the data center. In fact, I worked for a big tier one company, sold lots of servers, and I knew lots about workloads on servers. And I spent lots of time doing bare metal provisioning on servers and data centers. I spent years in data centers and thought I knew, you know, what data centers were. And... With the, with the immersion into open compute and with the immersion into starting up a, a, a data center company, um, I realized that I had a lot to learn after 20 years in this industry. And I think the reverse is true, sort of the, the you know, I, I, kind of, I kind of call the rack no man's land because it sits right in the middle of everybody that knows everything there is to know about electricity and energy delivery and you know the power in general, cooling in general, brick and mortar, real estate, and then you have the rack, and above the rack you have you know IT operations and uh, operating system administrators, DevOps folks, application developers, and never shall the two talk. Um, and to that end, we actually uh, with uh, uh, with uh, data center dynamics, uh, it, it, this started out as a as a casual conversation um, over sushi. Um, here in London, uh, George Rocket, uh, the CEO of Data Center Dynamics, and I were talking about how the world could benefit from more information as we consolidate and commoditize. And the reality is everything gets consolidated and everything gets commoditized, and it is happening at the data center right now. So to that end, um, we've initiated an event series that runs alongside DCD Converged called Stacking IT. And Stacking IT, while you may go look and see that it's a lot about you know, it's very much about open source, open standards, open interfaces. Um, it's as much that as it is talking about the actual stack, right, from mud to cloud of information technology and what these data centers are going to look like when workloads are actually put in context of designing and running data centers. And that series kicks off uh, in about a week in San Francisco, uh, July 30th and 31st. It'll be running also uh, at uh, DCD Chicago, um, Singapore, and London this year. So if you're interested in learning more about um, stacking IT and how the, the connected data center and the IoT data center is going to impact our world, make sure you check out these event series. As always, Cole, a pleasure to talk to you. Keep well, and we'll talk again. Thanks so much.